you know, the way you read, people just sort of go, oh, what's that, you know? And well, they think you're putting them on, is it? Yeah, they think, oh, well, what's he doing, you know, he's just running his finger up, up and down a page or something, you know? Yeah. And, and oh, the people are really amazed, you know, and people come up to me and say, what are you doing? I say, I'm reading, and they go, oh, really? <laughs> and they walk away, shaking their head or scratching their head or something, they can't believe it. One hundred years ago, time was measured the same as today. One hundred years ago, most people read at the rate of 250 words per minute. Today, with over a thousand times more to read, most people still do. But this is no longer a 250 word a minute world. How does modern man find time to read all he has to read? He must learn to read faster. This is the story of how he's doing just that, right here in Australia. Like his counterparts in Britain, in America, in Canada, he's learning a unique method of speed reading called reading dynamics. He's meeting the challenge of the knowledge revolution, which doubles or triples every year he lives. Uh, how many words a minute can you read? Well, now about two and a half thousand words a minute. Two and a half thousand words per minute. Uh, what about when you started off the course? Well, I think the speed was about 250, 260. So you've improved well, some well, tremendous some, amount. Almost, almost ten times. This is why it's vital. Reports, a million a minute. Books, thousands each week. Publications, nowadays you don't publish by the page, you publish by the acre, by the mountain. Businessman, student, all of us are caught up in the knowledge revolution. It was not always so. Once learning was the privilege of the few, the early churchmen, and knowledge, as always, was power. To let it spread was to endanger their control, so they guarded it carefully. But knowledge will out, and amid the sounds of arms and battle cries that filled the Middle Ages, another sound was heard. The pleasant clanking of a printing press, invented by a man named Gutenberg. That sound would soon fill the earth. Knowledge could belong to all who sought it, all fields of human thought and discourse exploded with the appearance of books. A flood was loosened. Last year, over 350,000 new books were published. With today's technology, the flood is raging. No man can contain it. Computers have been of some help, but their value depends on information, judgment and decision contained on the printed page. We must read more, and so we must read faster, all of us. These Australians come from every walk of life, for every occupation demands knowledge. On the average, a university student completes only 50% of his assigned reading each year. It's probably the major reason that only one out of every three first-year students ever reaches fourth year. Victor, what do you do for a living? I'm a first-year economics student at Sydney University, or I was last year. So you've completed your first year of studies now. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. right. And why have you decided to take the course? Well, in one of my subjects, um, I had uh, 10 pretty full-on books, like about 500,000 pages to read, just to get a background knowledge of my subject. Efforts to develop effective speed reading began many years ago. Studies reveal that the eye works by stops and starts. The stops are called fixations. The starts, stochastic movements. The eye also regresses frequently and returns to material already scanned. Studies also reveal that the average eye tended to see only a small area at the center of vision. Areas around this center are less and less clear as they approach the periphery. One way to increase the reading rate, therefore, is to have the eye see more and more while fixed and spend less time on each fixation. Keep moving to new matter. Machines were designed, which it was hoped would do this for the eye, push it along as it were. And mechanical paces brought mildly encouraging results. But they have built-in limitations. They cannot be brought by the user into all his reading situations. Moreover, they are essentially crutches for the eye, and when removed, the eye reverts to its old habits. Habits ingrained when the child was first trained to read one word at a time and out loud. Most adult readers continue this process. They sub-vocalize. 
say each word within themselves as they read. While the machine experiments were going on, a new approach to speed reading was being made by a young teacher named Evelyn Wood. Dedicated teachers like this learned her approach. Professor Wood had found occasional people who could read quite swiftly. She and her staff began collecting these rare specimens, studying their reading habits. Her approach was a pure application of the scientific method, observe, and conclude. What she observed was that her subjects did not read with the narrow, precise and limiting focus of the average reader, but with a wider, more general focus. What reading dynamics would later call soft focus. Her people, by pure natural gift, read not by the single word, but by large groups of words. It is as if one could assemble a puzzle, not piece by piece and slowly, but in large, meaningful sections. Uh, first of all, could you tell me what you do for a living? Uh, yes, Barry, I'm a solicitor. Now, what prompted you to take this course in the first place? Oh, I think um, a long time ago when I was at school, I, I read an article whereby a fellow in America could read at 85,000 words a minute. Um, I've always been interested in speed reading. I saw a, an article on television. Um, a graduate of the course was reading in excess of 3,000 words a minute, and he seemed to, be understand what, seemed to understand what he was reading. Uh, I thought, well, if I could read at that speed, it'd be a great help to my, my work, my studies, and, and general reading. Uh, Frank, you're one of a big class. Uh, do you find that working in a class helps you as an individual? Uh, yes, it has. It ha it's helped a lot. It probably would have helped it a lot more if I'd done the required amount of work, but I have, I have improved quite a bit. Well, um, how fast were you reading when you began the course? Oh, at about 330 words a minute, with a, a fairly low comprehension rate. I... To read that speed, I was, I was pushing myself and wasn't really understanding what I was reading anyway. And uh, since I've done the course, I'm, I'm reading more comfortably at about 1,500 words a minute. I'm understanding more than I, I did before. The development of reading dynamics to a worldwide institution, now with well over 600,000 graduates and taught in over 200 universities and hundreds of private schools, is far beyond the early dreams of Founder Wood. Well, I think that the thing that I thought would be possible maybe would be to go about 1,500 words a minute. And I remember the first student I got up to 1,500 words a minute. Because at the present time, I have no idea how fast people can go. I think we haven't even discovered the human potential. I think at very high rates of speed, it's possible to get just as good comprehension as you had when you were reading more slowly. Our incoming rates and beginning reading comprehension are maybe about between 60 and 70. When they finish, we should be around 85 to 90. Uh, the study skills, I think, are the things we do the best. Now, I see that uh, the course incorporates a new method of study. I can see what that could mean to a student, but how does the study procedure help you in your professional life as a solicitor? Oh, well, it helps me two ways. Uh, it helps me in my professional life. Um, if I've got to, uh, I prosecute, and if I've got to read a lot of evidence, depositions, I can read them um, very, you know, a lot quicker than I could before. I'm also doing a course in economics at Sydney University. Uh, the study methods I've learned um, help me greatly there, too. Thinking back the ways to study um, during my law school days, I had spent hours and hours and hours um, trying to, to study law books. Um, now I can find I can do the same study, the same sort of study in you know, about an eighth of the time, which is, if only someone had taught me to study before I went to law school. This is probably the trouble with universities. You don't learn to, uh, you don't learn to study. They say, right, read this for homework, read this case, read this book, but they don't tell you how to read it. And uh, it took me hours. So it's a funny thing, you know. The university just doesn't allow for... What, know, really slow readers? Or, yeah, or slow, yeah. slow readers or anything, yeah. you know. It, they really weed out the people who want to, you know, get an education, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's their way of doing it. And I had a lot of reading to do, and I thought, well... <laughs> I hope to God that this was the answer. And uh, I took the course, and, well, sure enough, I, I was reading... Well, how slowly were you reading to start off with? Uh, I forget my figures. I, I was around sort of 300, 350 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And what about your uh, improvement? I was pretty dr dramatic, you know. I, um, well, like what? Well, 
my final test came out, I think, about 3,000. I'm not sure. I, Paul's got the thing, and my comprehension was 100%. 100% comprehension. Now, what advantage is this going to have in your teaching career? Well, I will be able to get through a lot more material. Um, the more subjects a person teaches, the more reading he's got to do. And uh, so it's certainly going to help me there. The study procedure, which I did, which I thought was an excellent one, uh, helps me to organise the material better and get it in my mind better. Mm. And uh, all round, I think it will just make me a better teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Now, what about your students? Do you feel that this could be uh, a great help to school students? Oh, tremendous help, I think. Um, we, as I mentioned, the study procedure itself, which is the second lesson, uh, when I did it, I decided to do a bit of an experiment with them on part of the procedure anyway, and um, it was tremendous. I haven't had real time yet to, say, evaluate uh, with them, but their first initial reaction was, you know, much better than writing droves and droves of notes, mm. which uh, bored them to tears. Study methods. Recall patterns of books being read. These are bonus values. This one-time student is now a Reading Dynamics teacher. He can read at the rate of 3,000 words a minute and is typical of the skillful teachers in institutes around the world. Here, Reading Dynamics students are learning to plan recall patterns, a part of the study method. The system enables them to comprehend and to recall written material in a logical way. Once material has been so organized, its content is easily and accurately recalled at a glance. Even the planning of the pattern increases concentration and understanding. Many wasted hours of reading and rereading are eliminated. Again and again, graduates of Reading Dynamics cite the study method as being one of the most valuable aspects of the course. This is easily understood when one considers the economic facts of business. A man earning, say, $12,000 a year costs his firm about $7,000 for the time he spends reading business material. It need not be the case. Children, beginning their long years of schooling and learning, face an ever-increasing mountain of reading. Um, why did you decide to take the Reading Dynamics course? We have two boys, and we feel we owe them the best education we can possibly afford and they can make use of. They go to a good school but we felt that they must be able to read more dynamically. The one boy enjoys reading, gets a fair amount of comprehension from it. The other boy was a slow reader, wasn't interested. So we felt this might engender enough interest in reading so that he would go ahead. And what about the boys? This is the point. The younger boy, who apparently wasn't, well, he wasn't interested in reading. He didn't get very much from his reading. Now he gets as much content as the older boy, who's always had a fantastic comprehension. And he was the slow one to start off with. That's right. So the course has actually made him more alert and has helped him tremendously. That's right. It's done what we've been waiting for something to do. It seems to have switched him on. The modern corporation, keeping its executives in pace with a tremendous outpouring of information, needs faster readers. For these people, for these companies, a new reading technique is essential. Companies such as IBM, Civil and Civic, David Jones and the Coca-Cola Export Corporation use reading dynamics as the weapon needed to meet the speed up of knowledge to be absorbed. Listen, why did you take the course in the first place? Well, I'm an advertising executive and uh, we have a tremendous amount of reading to get through. I mean, we have to read all the local trade publications and all the overseas publications. Mm -hmm. We have to keep abreast of the news. Um, I get two news magazines at home and uh, I found that I was getting them and throwing them out with even tape without even taking the wrapper off. Probably everybody else does this to some extent, but I just couldn't afford this luxury of throwing away without reading them. This mother recognised the need for her children to meet the challenge early in life. <laughs> now, I believe, uh, to start off with, you weren't going to let both boys do the course. No, this is true. The, the younger boy was very slow reader, and I wondered if perhaps he was not really ready for it yet. Yeah. I thought perhaps he, he wouldn't be able to concentrate for a long enough time. But as in the mini-class, he concentrated the whole time and was interested. And after the mini-class, he said, my, that was really interesting, Mummy. that was really great. Mm. So it seemed to be worthwhile to go ahead. And I think it has. I'm sure, in fact, it has done a lot of good. He's much more interested in books now. He's got a reasonable brain. So now he gets um, the facts that he should have got before. He couldn't be bothered to read before. It all too much of a struggle. Yeah. Whereas now he finds that it's interesting and not such a hardship.
Yeah, that's great. Do you find that uh, you work as a family group at home or you work as individuals on this course? No, yeah, we worked as a group. We all sat around and did it together. So I must say they did more work than I did. <laughs> the exuberance of youth? Uh, possibly, and also I seem to have a mental block. I've always read a certain way, you see, and I, I find it very difficult to believe that I can change radically, whereas the boys have just absorbed it all. And I say to them, you're reading too fast, you can't possibly understand. Then I ask them, lo and behold, there's the comprehension. Now, what about the course in general? Do you think it's been of a good help to you? Yes, because now if I've been able to read faster now than I've ever been able to read before. And what good will that do you at school? I'll be able to um, read more books when I have to study. Do you think it'll make studying, you know, easier, easier or harder? Um, easy because if, say, we get set one book, well then I can read it six times over, while other people just read it once. It's not difficult to imagine the advantage a youngster has in being able to read five to six times faster than his classmates. And these children show adults that reading dynamically is a skill not associated with years of learning or of unusually high IQ. And listen, what about the reading course? Um, I believe you used to be a pretty slow reader. Yeah, I was, 85. 85 words a minute. Well, that was when you first went to the mini lesson. Yeah. And what happened then? Oh, and then I first I doubled my speed and then I went to 303. Yeah. How old are you, by the way? Nine. Nine years of age, right? So then you went to the lesson, the mini lesson, and you, you got your speed up from 86 words a minute up to 303. And uh, how many words a minute can you read now? Um, 2,800. 2,800 words per minute, starting at 85. That's fantastic. And I believe your comprehension rates went right up alongside it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've just got your figures for comprehension here, and I see where you started off by comprehending or understanding 56%, which is oh, just a little bit more than half, and now you're up to 86%. That's an improvement of 30%. Yeah, because it is. Mm. Now, for a boy who used to hate reading, what do you think of reading now? I think it's really good. You used to enjoy a fair bit of reading before you went to this course, not like your brother. Uh, yes, I did. What sort of things did you like to read? Um... Well, I had a um, series of books called Flicker, and I read those twice. You read them twice? Yeah. So I think when you came to the course, your figures were uh, 440 words per minute, which is pretty good. And you had a level of about 77% comprehension, right? Yes, that's right. And what happened after that? Well, I increased my speed to 3,000, and I, my comprehension to 92%. Three, you can read at 3,000 words a minute? Yes. And you can understand 92% of this, 3,000 words. Yes, that's right. I see you've been watching the little 10-year-old fella. How's it going with the course? Um, young Anthony. Um, well, he's a bit of an embarrassment, really. <laughs> <laughs> Why so? I, I spent a few lessons sitting with him. Um, he was reading at something like 3,000 words a minute, right at the beginning, well, you know, fairly well into the course, and I was reading at uh, 600 or something. And uh, he had a far greater comprehension rate than I did. And, uh, How do you feel about Anthony? Can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a very nice young kid. This is happening in Australia today. It's happening all over the world. Here is the voice of United States Senator George Talmadge. My judgment is this reading technique for introduced in the public and private schools of our country would be the greatest single step that we could make in educational progress. American television personality Art Linkletter had this to say after watching a speed reading demonstration by a young student in the United States. As a matter of fact, I think you'll all agree that this is an amazing and interesting course. What's the name of the course? Evelyn Wood, Reading Dynamics. Reading Dynamics by Evelyn Wood. Well, a lot of people ought to take this and learn to read and enjoy the marvelous things that are waiting for you in our great libraries. Meanwhile, in Australia, these students of Reading Dynamics recount their own experiences with the course. Len, could you give us a practical illustration of how the Reading Dynamics courses helped you in your business? Well, just take a simple matter like reading the newspaper. Um, there's probably six newspapers that I should have read, that I didn't read, that mm. I do now read. Um, it wouldn't take me any longer to read the six than it did to read one originally. So for a start, I get all of the news that I should get, both in the financial field and the business field, as well as the general news. Now, is this a, a difficult course? Uh, it seems to be such a tremendous result. Is it hard work? Is it? Uh, do you have to be terribly intelligent to take this course? 
well, not really. It's not a. It's not how bright you are or how intelligent you are. It's just a matter of being taught a physical skill, as you might be taught golf, or you might be taught to ride a push bike, perhaps. Would you be an isolated example in advertising, or would uh, most people in your profession have as much reading to do? No, I think anybody in any profession these days has more reading than they can probably cope with. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think it'd be just advertising alone. I'm sure that anybody in commerce today has more than they can probably cope with. So uh, realising this, you came along and did the Reading Dynamics course. That's right. Because I just had to. I had no choice. If it was a case of continue on as I was doing where I wasn't reading all that I knew I should, um, or virtually uh, find some other form of employment, I would think. Because there's so much that's happening, and uh, this is where we get most of our overseas information from books and publications that come out. Ted, why did you decide to do this Reading Dynamics course? Well, I'm reaching the end of one career, and uh, I'm trying to embark on another in teaching, and Reading Dynamics seemed to me the, the way to do it, to get the background study in. What career are you in at the present time? Uh, I'm with the Royal Navy. I'm on, sorry, I'm on loan to the Australians for two and a half years. Now, what standard had you reached in your reading before this course? Oh, 240-odd words a minute and 90-odd percent comprehension. And uh, at what stage are you now? Well, 3,000 words a minute, but the comprehension's about the same. So you've stayed at around about 90% comprehension, but your reading has improved from 250 words to 3,000 words. Yes, that's correct. And how much of a help do you think this is going to be in your training as a teacher? Well, I think it's going to be the, the mainstay, because now I can get all the studying done I want and still have time to relax, instead of spending all my time just burning the candle just to try and cover the ground. Now I can cover it and still relax. Vic, a few moments ago you were mentioning Exodus. Do you find you're enjoying reading books like this still? Oh, yes, yeah, great. I, I think I enjoy it more now because um, the book flows. Where before I'd read 100 pages and I'd be, oh, you know, I'd just be so tired I just couldn't read it anymore. Now I can just pick it up and just read straight through. And the novel or whatever it is I'm reading uh, keeps its continuity. You know, it's, it's much more enjoyable to sit in a film and watch the whole film throughout. Keep the continuity, keep the flow. And that's the way it is when you read, this way. You, you keep continuity, you keep flow, and the whole feeling and, and, and excitement of the novel is just with you the whole time. Now, how will you go from here, Frank, once you've finished the course? Will you keep on with this? Uh, they have graduate classes you know, whereby you can go and practice. You can be uh, kept on with your work, and I think it's pretty important that I, I go to these graduate classes and keep up my work. And I think I will improve a lot more than I... I can see it coming, and I can really see much greater speeds coming if I, if I um, keep going to the, uh, the graduate classes. One hundred years ago, time was measured the same as today. One hundred years ago, most people read at the rate of 250 words per minute. Today, with over a thousand times more to read, most people still do. Not people who have learned speed reading through reading dynamics. They challenge the flood of knowledge, the flood of books. Now, do you find that um, working with your hand down the book, this, uh, this intrigues me, you know, you see the hand going down like this. Did you find this strange at all to begin with? Oh, to begin with, yes. But th this was one of the big things. I mean, you've always got your hand with you. You can't lose that. And you can pace yourself with your hand, whereas if you have some other sort of gimmick, um, I think you quickly lose the, um, the idea behind the course. The, the whole thing being the pacing. And you quickly learn to pace yourself. Is that right, Greg? Yeah. Yes, those hand motions, they look rather, uh, rather strange to an outsider. Do you find that uh, people uh, are quite interested in what you're doing when you're reading a book and putting your hand down the page? Well, I'm not really interested in what other people are thinking. I'm just reading. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Just reading. Just reading ten times as fast as the average businessman, the average student, the average professional man and still just fast enough to keep up with the knowledge revolution that leaves everyone else behind. For every book a university student had to read a generation ago, today's student has 24, and the pace increases. Since this film began, some 18 new books have been published. That's a lot of words. They must be read faster. Can anyone afford to continue reading at a 19th century pace? How fast can man read? As fast as he can 
think. Thank you.